This time we're visiting the Technik Museum in Speyer, one half of a major aircraft and transport museum. Coming up, we wing walk a 747, step inside an Antonov AN-22, one of the largest propeller planes in the world, and check out all the attractions at this world famous museum. Technik Museum Spire is open daily from 9am to 6pm all year round and is an eclectic mix of planes, boats, trains and other automotive transport. There are over 70 aircraft to see either in one of the halls or in the open air space where the two major aircraft are the Antonov 22 and the Lufthansa 747-200 series. In 2002, after being decommissioned by Lufthansa, the aircraft was brought in part to the museum and reassembled. The final exhibitioning position is stunning, climbing out over the museum and offering the visitor amazing access to all areas of the plane that would normally not be possible for the general public. The views across the museum from the undercarriage show how huge this place is and just how jumbo the 747 is. Inside the cabin you climb up through the cabins with lots of interactive screens with information in English and German along with sections of the plane laid out as it would have been when it was in service with Lufthansa. The cockpit is sealed off but you get a good view of all the instruments. The early 747 had a distinctive spiral staircase to the upper deck, but the really special thing about this exhibit is the wing walk. The centre cabin door opens out onto a deck and you can walk down the wing turning to get views back over the plane that are unbelievable. If you're an AV geek then this will be a real treat. The back half of the aircraft has been stripped back to the shell to show you how the frame of the aircraft is constructed even down to the floor being removed in sections giving full visibility into the cargo hold which you can climb down into. The Vickers Viscount 814 was a passenger airliner for 71 passengers. It was the first commercial airliner with turboprop propulsion and ushered in a new era of air travel. This example was used by Lufthansa between 1962 and 72, after which it was used for training. Inside the aircraft is laid out in its original 70s 2 plus 2 seating with examples of a food service and the toilet facilities. There are many other outdoor displays to see including military aircraft, trains, rolling stock and engines. This Antonov AN26 turboprop has an interesting cargo still inside its belly. A USSR presidential limousine to be exact. This was used by the Soviet trading agency in Hamburg previously.
The Dassault Mercure 100 from Air Inter has been on display since 1995, a narrow-bodied twin-engine design by the French manufacturer Dassault. You can get a good look at the cockpit of this aircraft and the cabin is just as it was the last time it took passengers. Spreyer houses an interesting collection of Russian space artifacts, including the space shuttle equivalent Buran. It has a number of temporary and permanent vehicle exhibits, as well as aircraft parts on display like this 747 engine. During our visit, there was a temporary display paying homage to the Ford Capri. Be sure to check out the museum website to see what's on before you visit. There are plenty of really interesting things to see, like this Luftwaffe aircraft hanging from the ceiling and the undercarriage from an Air France Concorde. With a wingspan of 64 metres and an empty weight of 114 tonnes, the Antonov AN-22 is one of the biggest propeller aircraft in the world. Stepping inside, you can imagine the huge payloads this aircraft could carry, up to 100 tonnes. The rear bay doors are open and looking back you can see the colossal space available. The engineers area looks like something out of a Star Wars movie. The cockpit was tricky to see, but has room for five crew. There are other halls with even more exhibits, so you really need to allow at least half a day to visit this museum. We hope you enjoyed this quick tour. Next time we'll visit the second part of this museum at Zinderfinnum, featuring the Air France Concorde and the Russian Tupolev Tu-144. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss this one. Until the next time, happy travels from the Memory Seekers.